and welcome to the Boss Lady Coaching video cast, a Boss Lady Coaching production. I'm Holly Sexton, along with Megan Stith, and we are so happy to bring you professional develop information, professional development information, and uh, local business information. Just boss ladies from all around the world that inspire us. And so, Megan, uh, so happy to see you. And uh, we're finally getting out and about and being in person. But you can't beat Zoom when it comes to these recordings for the Boss Lady Coaching Podcast. <laughs> So we welcome Courtney Ballard as our guest. Hello. Yeah, she's an art studio owner. She owns Hip South in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And you can find her on Instagram. Go check it out. There's some just a feast for your eyes on Instagram at Hip South. And you can also find her at C Ballard123. So hey Courtney. Hi, Megan. Hey, hey, hey. Happy Hi. Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> That's right. We made it. That's right. Well, Courtney, I'm so excited to get to talk today because I've been a longtime fan of your work, uh, followed on social media, Thank seen some so of the much. projects that you were behind, but I really didn't know very much about your background and your story. So I would just love to lead off by you know, hearing how you got to where you are today, because sure. I know a lot of the career pathways that were, you know, pushing kids to follow or, um, you know, as adults look at new career decisions, sure. um, sometimes art isn't, you know, one of the top things that we're encouraging people to pursue. So how did, how did right. this come about? Right. Um, I was, I was always a creative kid. I loved arts and crafts and drawing and coloring. Um, I felt very, confident in art class in school where I might not have felt confident in a lot of other classes. Um, that was my happy place. Um, I really always wanted to be going to science though. Looking back, I mean, art was definitely like a hobby and something I loved to do, but I in no way thought it was going to be some big career choice for me. So um, went the science route and about halfway through my freshman year in college, I was like, this is not for me. Um, and I think for a lot of kids, when they make that move to college, their freshman year in college, like it gets really real. And, and you start thinking my, my oldest actually just finished his freshman year. And I'm pretty sure the same thing happened to him. He, um, kids in general, like I said, it gets kind of real and you have to think about what you're going to work towards to do for the rest of your life. I mean, that being said, people have different career changes all the time. And I think that's awesome. Um, but I just had this voice telling me that I, I probably needed to look elsewhere and art was what I loved. Um, so I made a big 180 <laughs> and went from biology, being a biology major to a fine arts major. I started in Berry College in Georgia, and then I moved to UK to their fine arts program and finished there. Um, and at the time, because graphic design, so this was 1999, I guess, 98. Um, Great. You couldn't even major in graphic design. It was really not a strong program. You could have an emphasis in that, but you had to major in something else, some other studio class. So I did photography um, and ceramics. And then I, my um, minor was like in graphic design. And I loved it. I loved, loved, loved it. But you just couldn't go very far. Um, I lucked out and had an amazing teacher who got me an internship. And so I worked for, is this too much information? Am I like, <laughs> I feel like I'm just talking um, and that's paint. Sorry. I was painting earlier and I have blue paint all over my hand. Um, Be disappointed if you showed up without any paint on you. Yeah. I made sure it wasn't on my face, but I guess I didn't check my hands. Uh, um, so I have a quick, quick question. Yeah. 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 Thank you for, for sharing what the context is and what was happening in that 1999 sure. timeframe and yeah. pathway. So let's um, talk really quick about when a pathway isn't available, but we're being drawn to it. So sure. Megan, too, with your higher ed background, like what do students usually do during that time? And, and I'd like to bring that back around to Courtney, because I think it's so important for us to follow our bliss, but also be able to do it in a lucrative way. So and exactly. now, graphic artists are necessary to every organization. So Megan, what okay. do people typically do in that situation when there's not a direct pathway? Well, and I guess my own career is kind of evidence of this. <laughs> 
but um, you know, it doesn't, it, it's great when there is a sequential path to follow that's clearly defined, but uh, sure. you know, the thing in encouragement I give my own kids is that, you know, it's about experience. It's about trying things, finding out what you like and don't like, and just continuing to push yourself to, to try new things. So I think, I guess I'm the, the advocate for, um, it's great if that, that path works out, but if it's not clear, it doesn't mean it's something you can't do. Yeah. You just have to uh, build relationships. I think that has a lot to do with it. And it sounds like Courtney that, you know, internships and things opened a lot of doors for you. So I think finding a way to, to meet people that are doing the type of work you want to do. Yeah. Uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Taking advantage of those opportunities, even if they scare you to the moment, you know, just taking the leap and kind of trusting yourself and trusting that it's, it's meant to be, and it was put in front of you for a reason. Um, so yeah, I, I absolutely fell in love with graphic design shortly after graduating from UK. And there wasn't a lot of need for graphic designers in E-Town, which was totally fine. But um, my son and I moved back here and I knew that I wanted to um, be creative and try to make it work. Um, but graphic design jobs were not going to come my way. And I knew that. So I started taking any and every job that came my way. And that meant painting um, a ton of personalized canvases. I was painting murals in kids' rooms and nurseries and um, new construction builds. I was painting mural work. So I was just saying yes to everything um, and just keeping my head above water and I was loving it, but, um, it was hard, but I was just saying yes to everything <laughs> and trying to make it work. I think like Megan says, you know, saying yes and trying new things and doing it scary. Yeah. I think those are all boss lady traits. Uh, we see mm -hmm. that, um, across the board, which is exciting. So how did you, um, get those, those gigs, those jobs? Um, did you market for yourself or did you outsource that? Well, being from here, I felt very blessed that I just had friends and they had friends and it was very, ended up landing me in a really cute little gift store. I don't mean shoot. Um, personally for you, do you remember that years ago? Like 2003-ish maybe? I worked there for a couple of years. It was downtown, kind of across or catty corner to um, State Theater or PNC Bank. And it, her entire store was personalized items. And so she hired me to come. And again, I mean, I was just painting whatever somebody wanted a name on, picture frames, um, all kinds of gifty items, home decor. So I was there for a while. And then she ended up closing and moving, I believe, or at least closing. I think she, she went, ended up going like all online or something. Um, and then I just, you know, kept taking jobs and making it work. And then I met my husband and got married and was able to stay at home with my son, had another little boy, Ethan and Jack. Um, and that allowed me to still take on those commission and freelance jobs from home while I was with them. Um, and then somehow graphic design just kind of popped back in. I mean, I went years without doing anything digital. I didn't even own a laptop. I mean, I had no design software. Um, and I wish I could remember now, I think it was something through my church um, because I'd gotten a reputation for just being creative and being willing to jump in and help people. Um, and I think somebody asked me, I'm pretty sure, um, thinking back, it was something related to like vacation Bible school or church. And that was the first, the first thing that kind of got the graphic design ball rolling again. So what was that like for you uh, to do graphic design, to jump back in after all those years? Oh my gosh. I was like, how did I go so long? Without <laughs> <laughs> I like saved my pennies, got a MacBook, got Illustrator. I mean, it's all so different now. You used to have to just buy Illustrator in this big, extremely expensive lump and install it onto your computer. 
now, I mean, all that software, Photoshop, Lightroom, you kind of pay by month. It's much easier um, to have access to that. But yeah, I, it was it was so great to um, get back into that world for sure. So, what was the tipping point for you to open Hip South and to have a storefront? Um, this is actually my second studio. Always wanted a studio. Um, I think every artist's dream is to have their own space to work. I was working at my dining room table for years and years and years. Um, there's still paint and varnish on it, I'm sure. Um, it was just always a dream of mine. And again, it, it was something that just kind of happened. Um, my first studio was actually, I don't know if it was serendipitous or what, but in the same spot as the personally for you shop used to be, or maybe it was next door, I can't remember, same building. So I opened up that studio and that was strictly really just teaching workshops to kids. Um, and, and sorry, let me back up. My, my oldest sister, my older sister, Neely owned um, a children's boutique and I taught lessons to kids out of that little workshops. Um, and that kind of took off. I had an amazing following, the most lovely supportive moms that would bring their kids and we just had a blast. Um, she ended up closing her store, her boutique, but I still wanted to continue doing workshops. So that's how I landed in my first studio downtown. Okay, stay stick with me. I've got, I, I've traveled the road. Okay, so I had that for probably a year and a half. Then I get approached by St. James where my boys went to school to teach art there. Um, talk about a leap of faith. <laughs> I mean, I had taught maybe at most 10 kids, um, and we worked with all kinds of things, crafty things, fine art things, and I loved it. Very different than doing, you know, kindergarten through eighth grade, teaching art, like with a curriculum. But I said yes. It was very scary to me, but very exciting as well. I love that school, love the people there. I um, knew, knew so many of them just because that's where my boys went to school. And I also knew that it was going to be a lot to, to run a studio and to teach. So I let go of my studio and I was there. I was at St. James for seven years. Kind of maintained my freelance um, and commission work as just a side gig at that point. Um, but then it got to the point where I just wanted to, as, as bigger jobs came my way, as much as my heart was in teaching art and I love the kids and I love the staff, um, so much admiration for teachers. I just felt a pull to kind of go off on my own. And I saw for at least sign in this space downtown and I knew I wanted to stay downtown and here I am. That was not a nutshell version, but that's how I got here. <laughs> That's okay. That's what we're all about. Um, Megan, if you want to jump in here, I do have a question because Courtney's art is so varied and I'd love to get into that. But if you want to jump in, go for it. Sure. You know, I, it, I love that you mentioned downtown because that has changed so much over the past few years. So um, what has that meant to you to see downtown be revitalized and um, the art that's coming to more public spaces? Um, what's, that, what's that been like to, to be part of? It's been so unbelievably amazing. So when I, when I opened up this space, when I opened up Hip South and Pella's Aries wasn't there, like I knew that they were coming and that was all happening for sure. Um, but it was still, I mean, uh, Vibe, which is right around the corner for me, had been here for maybe a year or two. And there was definitely some momentum, but um, it was still kind of an up and coming area. I've always loved downtown spaces. I mean, if we travel anywhere, we love seeing the downtown area. And I knew that's where I wanted to be, but I also wanted to make sure um, that that momentum stayed and I wanted to be a part of it. I had no idea that I would be as big a part as I've been blessed to be, but um, I, I really wanted that for, for Elizabethtown. Um, so yeah, I signed the lease and said, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of downtown, what viewers have seen your art, they just don't know it. So what are some of the pieces that you have around town that are yours? 
Um, okay, my first mural opportunity was through Kevin Addington and his Renaissance group. And that's the White Dove mural. Um, I'm pointing just because I'm in my studio. It's right on the corner. That's like on the corner, that, that back alley that leads you down to Impalazeri's. Um, what alley is that? I'm drawing a blank. Is that Plum? I no. think that, yeah, that's Plum Alley because okay. in E-Town, it runs from Impalazeri's up to the State Theater. And yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So Plum Alley. So that's on Plum. Um, and then I... Uh, Anna Clark and um, the rock star group at tourism to paint a mural in their in their visitor center. Um, and that was a biggie because that was that's elevated off the ground. So I had to do the whole thing from a lift. Um, and I, I loved it. That was a huge, huge learning opportunity, um, but a great one. Let's see. After that I think it was another Kevin Addington project. He owns the Haycraft um, and Craft um, typography on the side of that building. Um, let's see. During quarantine, um, I just did. I donated a piece, and that is "Love Where You Live." Um, on the side, it's across from PNC Bank. It faces. Is that it? Jay Brad, I'm in the middle of painting one on the side of the old Cobbler's Cafe, what is now Jay Bradley um, Men's Clothing Store. And that's about halfway done. Let's hope the rain holds out for another day or so. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing, too. You work in all sorts of weather, literally and proverbially. Um, yeah. With the different, um, and, and let's talk about that really quick. Uh, you talked about graphic sure. design, you talked about murals, but you also do commission art as well, and you create art on your own. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. I have all the art in my studio is mine, and they're all original pieces, um, but I do a lot of commission work as well. So if someone comes into the studio and they see a piece that they love, but they need it to be bigger or smaller or a different color, or they want it to be a framed piece instead of a, a canvas piece with like a finished edge to hang, I'll work with them. Or sometimes they come in and they say, I have a big empty wall in my house. Um, can you help me? And we work together and figure something out. And that's always fun. Let's talk about branding and iconography. Um, okay. You've been part of the process in helping a, a customer or business establish a brand through art? Yes. Um, and I have loved getting back into that world. And with my mural work, and honestly, some of my design work too, it starts graphically. So I will, I either start like with the white dove, really that's all typography, that layout. There's one small icon that's the original, um, that was in the original logo of white dove that we brought in kind of as an homage um, to the the ad that was on the, the building originally. Um, so with that, I mean, I just started strictly with different sorts of font styles and different sorts of layouts until we landed on something that we really loved and paid tribute. Um, but a lot of times too, I'll, I'll start an illustrator or I start with Procreate on my iPad and I'll draw things there and do it digitally. And then that transfers to a large scale in terms of mural work. Um, so yeah, logo and branding is something I'm, I'm so, so passionate about. One, just because I love to do it and I love to work um, graphically and I love typography. I'm a huge font nerd. Um, and two, it's just, I feel that it's so important as an existing business that might want to refresh or a brand new business um, that needs to find a way to position themselves graphically, um, visually, um, and to kind of tell their story through their logo, through color, through type. Um, so yeah, I've helped several business, local businesses with, with branding and um, identity development. Did you lose me? I know that was a big one. Um, sometimes on Zoom, it's hard for me to tell when Megan's gonna jump in. And oh. so <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, can you spell your name? I'm still here. Because <laughs> otherwise, it's real easy for me just to dominate the conversation. I don't <laughs> working on it but uh, I need some I think you all are a great team (laughs) and um so Megan you look like you were going to jump in there for a minute so uh, so I'll well I would love to hear Courtney you've worked on so many different projects is there one that sticks out to you that was incredibly meaningful or that um is really kind of a, a special one that's different than all the others you'd like to tell us about um I mean the one that pops into my head is just going back to the the one at the visitor center the elizabethtown mural that was really special um just working with that team was a great experience and the the uh concept behind that mural was using the word elizabethtown but incorporating a lot of illustrations that um are true to elizabethtown So we have a lot of the architecture and we have little icons here and there. Um, That was a really special project. And and then that led into some apparel design that I helped them with. So we picked and pulled different illustrations from that mural and made some cute little tote bags and sweatshirts. We made a coloring book that they give to kids when they come in. So yeah, that, that that was a special one for sure. I feel so connected to every project. It's hard to pick one. Art's so personal. Yes, art is so personal. So speaking of that, have you ever just bombed just like it just did not work the way that you planned? And what did you do about it? Um, I well, back before I used a projector or had software where I could do like a trial run and I was literally just, you know, pencil and paper measuring a wall. This was This was way back when I was doing a lot of commission work early on. Um, Doing large scale pieces, especially like by hand and just having to use like the grid method or getting my level out and just kind of crossing my fingers and hoping that it would all work. The good thing is really with paint, nothing's super permanent. So you can go back and kind of fix whatever you might have messed up. yeah, I remember a lot of late nights painting because I would work when my kids went to bed um, and I probably shouldn't have because I'd look down and I would spell like the easiest word on earth wrong. I'd be like, yes, I'm finished. And I would say, oh no, <laughs> that's not how you spell like, I don't know, John. <laughs> like, how do you mess that up? Um, but yeah, most of it you can tweak and, and switch. And that's a good lesson for life. Glad you're not a tattoo artist, though, because um, no. <laughs> and I have said that so many times to people because I have friends who have friends that are tattoo artists. Talk about pressure. I mean, there's no going back. <laughs> there's no misspelling things either, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if someone's watching right now and uh, yes. they're branding or they're a professional and they'd like to um, develop in their art, in their business, what suggestions and learning points would you share with them? Oh gosh. Um, I mean, really when push comes to shove, just keep working and keep as a creative, um, and I'm not going to speak for all creatives, but for me, especially There's so much comparison, especially when you have Instagram and um, Pinterest and every every place else. I mean, it's a blessing and a curse because you discover all these amazing creatives um, and admire their work. And that's the awesome part. But the comparison game can be a little tricky. Self-doubt can be tricky. Um, So just not being afraid to fail. trying your best to believe in your work, pushing through that fear, um, I think probably relates to a lot of jobs, not necessarily just art, but like I said before, because art is so personal, it's, um, it's, it's tricky <laughs> to, to move past that. Do your kids think you're cool? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Um, I'll ask them later. I would probably get a look and then because they wouldn't want to hurt my feelings, maybe they'd say, sure, mom, you're really cool with maybe a side eye to each other. Um, But maybe not. If they do, I doubt they would admit it. (laughs) 
<laughs> we think you're well, cool. I have to say, yeah, we think you're cool. Thank uh, you, thank you. And I think it's so cool when I'm driving around at the Squirkle <laughs> in downtown, and I see you up on your ladder with your your face, your your whole face is just in yes. it. You know, you can tell. Thank you for not honking. I know you're not one of those people that honk. Um, I had one of those today. It scared the life out of me. <laughs> so we don't want Courtney to fall off the ladder. So no. what new projects are you excited about? Can you share anything that you're working on, like a website or social media? Yes, that's a, um, my next big project is for myself and I'm so long overdue in doing it, um, is getting a website launched, well designed and launched next month, fingers crossed. Um, I have an amazing friend who is a creative as well, but he's a lot better with web design and all the strategy that goes behind that. So he's helping me out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm getting things together to hopefully get that up and going next month. So people can bookmark it. What is your site address going to be? It's going to be CourtneyBallard.co.co. And where are you on Instagram? I am C Ballard one two three, and then Hip South. Well, I, I kind of tag team those two accounts. I feel bad. I feel like I haven't posted to Hip South in a while. Um, but yeah, a lot of my personal work and commission work you can find, especially when I'm out and about, is always on is always on my personal slash work account. So for your physical location, um, what are the hours and, um, and are there classes? What are you doing there on site right now? Um, I don't have regular hours. It's hard for me to keep regular hours just because I do have to leave sometimes and go to a job site or meet with a client on location. So in studio, typically it's by appointment only. I mean, I, I have my lights on and my candles burning and my music going and people pop in a lot if they see me in here, which I love, but I, I don't have like a, you know, 10 to five um, open door policy. Um, what else did you ask? Oh, classes. Um, would love to get back into workshops and we'll probably do that closer to the holidays. I'm very good at stretching myself a little thin and I'm trying to work on that. And so, and I, I usually do a, a summer series, a workshop for kids. Um, and I let that go this summer just so I could kind of focus on some other things but I'd like to come like fall around the holidays. I'd like to bring people back into the studio now, now that we can. I love that. Well, please share it with us and we'll let the Boss Lady Network know on Instagram. Oh, I'd love to, I'd love to, thanks. That's great. So what are you excited about? Um, if you're an artist or, or some median or some, um, some trend that you're excited about in art or business? What is trend? <laughs> I don't know. This goes back to the am I cool question, I think. Um, I honestly just love that people are putting their work out there. I mean, obviously established artists are putting their work out there, but I love, and, and obviously it's very easy through social media, but I love that people, because it's a, it's a vulnerable thing to post your, to post your work and, and share it with the world. Um, for me anyway, I'm sure a lot of people don't don't have as much of a problem with it as I do, but um, I think just seeing that people of all ages, people of all um, demographics, they're they're putting it out there, and that means you're taking the first step to to do something that you love and to share something that you love, and I think that's awesome. Awesome. Well, we're so psyched to meet you, Courtney. I know it's not cool to say psyched anymore, but um... say it. I'm an elder millennial Gen X, <laughs> so I'm a cusper. So, so we, <laughs> we say, totally. <laughs> so, Megan, is, is there anything you'd like to share or interact with Courtney before we go? Our time goes so quickly. I know. Well, I, I definitely need to. Uh, I have a creative younger child who uh, got an art set last year for his birthday. I think he's he's oh, my creative so one. I need to. I want to encourage both kids, but um, I think I've got a, a future workshop client for you. <laughs> good, good. I can't wait to have him. He will probably paint dinosaurs like eating everybody. Uh, might be a little dark, but <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. And I, I love seeing little boys and moms that support little boys that are creative. 
Um, so high fives to you on that. Well, I can't wait to get them to a workshop. So yes, let us know <laughs> when they open back up. I'll let you know. Awesome. Well, Courtney, we're so excited to meet you. Uh, we're both fans of your work in oh. every capacity. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to be with you guys. You're welcome. Everybody stay in touch. Follow Courtney on Instagram at hip south and C Ballard one, two, three. And you can find us at be the boss coaching.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks.